welcome back to Naked Rabbit Homestead, home of Eden's Angoras. Today's video is a topic that I never thought that I'd be covering. I'm going to be saying a lot of things that I never thought I'd be saying. Um, however, here we are talking about why we no longer breed French Angora rabbits. I'm going to save my number one reason why I'm no longer breeding French Angoras to the end of the video. So please keep watching and hang in there with me for that reason because it is big. It blew my mind after two years of in-depth research and experience with all five Angora breeds. It blew my mind, okay? So you're going to want to stick around for that. Uh, before we get started, this is my experience. These are my opinions, right? We've all got different stories to tell. <laughs> some of us have wool in our eye as we're trying to explain that. Um, some of the things that I'm going to say today make, make some people bristle up. Um, whether it's because they don't want people to know these things or whether it's because that hasn't been their experience. So let's just allow space for each other in the world. Um, everyone has only got their story to tell, right? So this is mine, don't bite my head off, because um, I feel like people need to hear these things. So I do have some notes with me so I don't get frazzle-brained, because I do very easily. And I'm going to try to film this video all at once for you so that I can get this out there into the world. So, first of all, why would anyone want to stop breeding these beautiful, enchanting, amazing animals? First, let's talk about the positive things about them. First of all, they're incredibly docile. There's no comparing a French Angora rabbit to something like a Holland Lop or another domestic or commercial breed of rabbit. They are just, they've been bred for hundreds upon hundreds of years to be handleable, to be super calm. And you can tell, here I have Ophelia, you can barely see, and her daughter, you can tell just how docile they are. They're very cuddly, um, and they want to be near their person when they trust, when they trust you. So that is a wonderful thing about them. They also, um, you don't need much equipment. When you're getting into them, you don't need the whole blower, clippers, all that stuff that you need with a German or a giant Angora rabbit. You can just have a comb. And for that reason, they're extremely beginner friendly. Which leads me to my next point. They sell extremely well because they're such a great beginner rabbit. There's no comparison between my giant and German Angora sales and these guys. They fly off the shelves, so to speak, because they're really easy. They're easy maintenance, they're easy to groom, you don't need a lot of equipment, and they're not as expensive as some other Angora breeds. But there are reasons for that. Um, we're sticking with the positives so far. They also have really large litters um, Ophelia has only ever had eight or nine in each of her litters, and they're great moms in general. I think it's because they are a commercial rabbit breed, so they have the qualities bred into them to be a good meat rabbit, produce meat, as well as wool, which is another positive. Maybe not a positive for most of us that are probably in these rabbits for fiber arts and we want to cover their ears when we talk about meat rabbits but some people really enjoy that quality and that is okay too um, as homesteaders we're always trying to be practical right so having a dual purpose breed is a great way to be practical um, they also have a truly iconic yarn when people think about Angora yarn, they are thinking about French Angora because it has this amazing halo effect where the guard hairs poke out from the rest of the yarn and it shines and the light looks like a halo. It is just absolutely heavenly. So they have an absolutely amazing yarn. Um, they are also ARBA recognized, so they are showable. and. 
those show winnings can look really nice on your pedigree as your French Angora rabbits are selling really well. Now, you do have to put forth some effort for them to sell really well, but so that's relative, but <laughs> with putting the piles of effort into it that I have, they have sold really well. Um, it's really easy, really easy to harvest this fiber. <laughs> it's just everywhere. <laughs> okay, so now on to why we're no longer breeding them. This we might need to cover their ears for. In my experience, having experience with all five Angora breeds, that is Satin, English, French, German, and Giant, they are by far the least friendly breed of Angora rabbit, in my experience. I've had many of them. Some have been really sweet and really nice, and like I said, they're miles ahead of of Holland Lops and different other breeds, Rex, that you might have, but still a little lackluster in personality, not near as easy to handle. I liken my Germans to ragdoll cats. You can just throw them around, not that I do, but they, they're very, very tolerant when compared with these guys. Um, the second reason, which is a very big reason, is they produce half the wool, half of a giant Angora or a German. Now they produce the same amount of wool as an English Angora, but an English Angora eats way less than a French. So if you are serious about making clothing, um, you're gonna have to have a lot more French Angoras than you would other rabbits, and you're gonna spend a lot more in feed to get to your final destination of having clothing. So they're not exactly the bee's knees when it comes to fiber production. Um, and now we've reached the last reason. This is the most important reason. And it's a really hard reason for me to talk about why we're no longer breeding them. And that it's something that you would never expect. Even when you're touching them, they are just so velvety soft. You know, Angora is known for being so soft. But the, those guard hairs that poke out from, um, from your yarn, I don't know if I can get it close enough to, yeah, you can see that halo, which is so beautiful. You put that halo against your neck and it itches. I know, you're probably in shock. My Germans, my Giants, English, butter soft wool. But the French, those guard hairs are prickly. Now, I can wear them in a hat just fine because, you know, I have a lot of hair covering it. Um, I can make headbands out of it. But as for wearable clothing, I just don't get it. And I don't want anyone to get, get this far into a scarf. My mother-in-law crocheted this actually, but I wove a scarf of French Angora. So that is like, you know, so many hours of work, um, countless hours, to find out that their garment that they put their heart and soul into is itchy. That is not okay. That is not okay with me. It does not have to be okay with you. Now, could you line the inside of this with a different fabric? Yes. Could you spend hours pulling out every guard hair? Yes. And good on you if you want to do that. But that does not fit my goals. This does not fit my goals. My heart was broken when I got this scarf back, this beautiful scarf from my softest coated French Angora at the time. And I can't enjoy this garment. I can't sell this garment. So months and months and months of just feed alone going into this is just looking at it from a business perspective it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Looking at it from my own perspective, like for my personal use, it doesn't work. 
So there you have it. These two beautiful does who I have loved since, you know, Ophelia has been one of my first. Um, she's going to be going to a new home in the morning, a, a wonderful, wonderful home with a woman named Krista. Hi, Krista, if you're watching. Um, and she's going to take wonderful care of them. She appreciates the, the qualities that this breed does have, which we went over. They have so many amazing qualities. And as for us here at Eden, we will be focusing more on our German and our giant Angora programs so that we can really put our blows where they count um, and give our cage spaces to those that produce twice the wool, uh, which is really what we're after here personally. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I hope I didn't offend any bunnies. I love French Angoras, okay? Um, but <laughs> I feel so silly. But I hope this video was very informative to you. Um, I hope it was helpful if you're making the decision on which Angora breed to go with. And please subscribe. Please help me out because I will have so many more tips and tricks on Angora rabbits of all breeds for you here in the future. Until then, take care guys. Bye.